Welcome to the Build Your Beautiful Business Podcast with your host, Julie C. Butler. If you're looking to build the business of your dreams, then this is the space you want to be in. Join Julie as she talks about ways that you can successfully scale your profitable dream business, one that will give you ultimate time freedom and the abundant lifestyle you deserve. Julie will take you by the hand, sharing with you her business savvy strategies as she chats it up with her favorite online entrepreneurs. You'll get a weekly dose of boosted confidence as you learn as they reveal their inside tips and tools that you need to start building a profitable dream business of your own, one that you'll love and that works for you on autopilot. Hi there. Welcome back to the BBB podcast. I'm super excited today. Jane and I have just met for the first time. We've known each other for a little while now because we were part of the same summit, the Women Thrive Summit, uh, back in March. And so today I was excited to meet Jane, but I had no idea she was actually Canadian. And not only is she Canadian, but she's actually from my hometown. So that's crazy. Hi, Jane. Hi, I'm so excited, Julie, to be here. And the fact that we just realized we both grew up in the same town, same city, not too far from each other is pretty wild. And your husband's from where I'm from. So what the heck? (laughs) (laughs) I know, I know. It's just so crazy how like when you meet people, it's like the... Like, I I truly believe that I always attract the right people. And I have chemistry with like every single people, every single person I meet. It's just the way it happens. And I'm sure that it's the same with you. But um, it's just so cool how like the universe brings us together. And, you know, here we are telling stories about, you know, where we grew up and all that stuff. And it's so cool to to be like, what's like me too. (laughs) Right? I know. And I was already so excited for this. I know we've been looking forward to doing this for a while. And it just raised my vibration, maybe three levels (laughs) of like beyond. I'm like, Oh, my God, this is so amazing. What else can I find out about you? (laughs) (laughs) I know. And we're like, okay, we could talk for another three hours. But you know, you have another call soon. So let's really let's let's get to the podcast another day. Yeah. (laughs) And let's let's book coffee for another day. (laughs) Awesome. So uh, Jane, today we're going to talk about reclaiming your happiness to start living the life you want and deserve because we all want that. But before we get started, why don't you uh, just introduce yourself? Yeah, I'd love to. So my name is Jane Wareham and I am the Mind Shift Coach. So I am a mindset coach. I am an international speaker, also a podcast host, and really I feel it's my mission to help other women and entrepreneurs start to understand the power of the mind because the mind is a beautiful thing. And when you learn the power of it, when we learn that we have everything within us right now to achieve what we want, we unleash and unlock, you know, potential that we didn't even know was there. And so that's really what I help my clients do. That's what I'm always talking about. And so why I call myself the mind shift coach is because I really help my clients and I've, you know, mastered myself various mind shifts over the last few years that things are holding me back. And I learned tools and modalities that I could apply to my life because the reality is in business, we need more than just strategy. Strategy is important, but if you don't get your head in the game, if you don't have the belief, if you're not embodying who you need to be then you're never going to get to where you want. So that's what I do. And I love that. And it's like a package deal, right? Like we need the mindset, we need the mind shift, but we need the also the strategies and taking the action. So they work really like they work hand in hand together. And I think that sometimes we work either too much on the mindset and not, you know, the strategies and all that. Uh, or it's the opposite. We're like all about strategy and marketing and but we're not doing the mindset work. And, and so we fall short of what we think we can achieve, right? Where I think there's has to be a balance with the two um, to achieve the success and the desire, like what we desire truly. A hundred percent. You nailed it. There has to be mm-hmm. a harmony, a harmony of both. And I think you're exactly right. And we've all done it you start your business or you start something new, maybe you pivot your business and you want to learn, how can I do this? How can I get 5K months, 10K months? How do I get more clients? And you just want the answers. 
So you seek out a course or a coach that's going to give you that strategy. They're going to give you a strategy that worked for them. And you can apply that strategy and it can absolutely work initially. <laughs> and then whether you're able to maintain that and sustain that. And when we're not, which I've been in that case where I applied something, it worked for a bit and then it didn't work. Then what I realized was, oh, wait a second. My mindset hasn't caught up to what I'm doing and I need to work on my belief in myself and I need to work on those pieces. So a thousand percent, I think it's like if, if, if we reach a point where we're spinning our wheels, where we get stuck, you know, how many times have we said or heard from our clients, I'm feeling stuck. It's like when we're feeling stuck, it's like, take a moment. What have I, what have I been doing? You know, have I been wishing and praying and not taking action or have I only been taking action and not actually focusing on what's going on in my mind? So yeah, the harmony of the two is key. Awesome. Okay. So let's start with this. So what are some common challenges that women face when it comes to reclaiming their happiness? I think that this is such a key question. And how can we how can we overcome these obstacles? Yeah, so what I see most commonly, and I did this myself. So I come I now, you know, as a life coach, amazing entrepreneur, living my best life, loving it. I come from a corporate world. I was a project manager. <laughs> For 18, 19 years, I still do some contract work. So I've been doing it since 2007. I came from that world. I came from the corporate desk nine to five job. And a struggle that ends up happening is as we start going through our life, we start to accomplish things and we start to get all these accomplishments. And, you know, our CV starts building. And whether that's work CV, life CV, you could become a mom, a parent. You know, there's so many accomplishments that can happen in life. And I know what I found is, you know, I was about eight years into my career, very successful, at the end of the day, feeling unhappy. And I was like, what is going on right now? I'm taking three trips a year because I'm making enough money to live on my own in Toronto. You know, I'm, I, I felt like I did all the right things. I'm like, this is, if I looked back eight years prior this is the life I dreamed about. This is the life I wish I had. And the reality was, is there's a lot more to life than money and vacations. And what I realized, I mean, similar to, you know, you've sold all your things and moved to Costa Rica. In 2015, I decided about that eight year mark. I'm like, there's more to life. There has to be more. And I decided to sell everything I owned and I traveled around the world. And this is where things sunk in even deeper for me, where I realized my happy place is on a beach, but I was on a beach in Bali and unhappy after two and a half years of traveling, living in Bali for two months. Sounds glorious. It was glorious in many ways, but I had a realization yet again, I'm escaping. <laughs> like I'm trying to find happiness from exterior things. And this is a big challenge where whether it's travel, no matter what, where you're looking for happiness, in another person, in a job, you think a promotion's gonna make you happier. You know the statement, I'll be happy when I lose weight, like fill it in with whatever it is you want. That is a big challenge. And what I realized on this beach in Bali was like, oh my gosh, something is wrong with what's going on in my mind because I thought this would be the happiest of moments yet I still felt alone I felt all these all these different things I, was, I felt an unhappiness from within and that was it and then when I decide then I had to think okay I started to reflect back on the on my travel time and I started to reflect back on my life and I was like when was I most happiest what was I doing and you know they weren't things that I would be necessarily just writing on my CV. Like I can tell you one of my happiest moments was when I was doing housekeeping and cleaning luxury hotel rooms in Australia, luxury villas, actually, that were like on the coast of the ocean. It was stunning. And again, you know, not a major accomplishment like the ones I had attained in my corporate life, but I was so happy because I was moving my body. I'm a highly active, energetic person. I was never meant to sit in a desk ever. And I did that for a long time. 
And I had never experienced life outside of that because this is just the norm of what you do when you live in Toronto or in a city or grow up in Ottawa, right? You get a job, you work at a desk, like this is what an adult does. And I experienced this other forms of work while I was traveling, opened my perspective. And then I realized, okay, happiness, no, like I need to create my own happiness. And I have the power to do that by looking from within. And it can be a bit of a harsh realization when you realize, you know, when you actually sit down and think, am I happy? Why don't I feel happy? Especially the phrase, I should feel happy. So many people have it worse than I do. But you're living your, we're living our own life, right? We got to look after ourselves and really tap into what it is that brings us the most joy and then find ways to start to incorporate that into our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. And it's truly so important, right? Because it starts from within where you are, what is around you. And, you know, like sometimes it's, it, we have to look at the hard truth of like, you are 100% responsible for what you are surrounded with, right? Like, you decide. So, so it's so important to, to feel the way you want to feel, or feel the way you think maybe you should feel before you get to, oh, if I have extra money, I'll be happy. If I, you know, whatever, whatever that, that, that when I get to this place, I will Mm -hmm. be happy. I'll be happier or whatever. When the secret is to, to feel that way now, And, you know, like, I think that if we look at life and look at, okay, yes, maybe you're going through a shitty time, (laughs) whatever, because it happens, Um, no matter what, like, what, if you're listening to this, and you have like, food in your belly, and a roof over your head, and what, like, that is enough, right, Mm -hmm, to make you mm -hmm. happy. And the things that maybe do not bring you happiness, maybe you need to like, kind of have a look at it and be like, okay, well, I, you know, because you decide, you decide what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep, what you want to continue doing, what you don't want to continue doing. It's all up to us, right? A hundred percent. And I think one of the things that I say, that's, oh, it's almost like a punch in the gut is when we really think about it and we, you and I, I know we're on the same wavelength. And maybe, and your listeners through listening to your podcast, probably getting on the same wavelength too, but whatever it is that's happening around you, you've created, you know, and that is a harsh reality when what's happening around us is not exactly what we want. Now, the great thing is, like you said, tapping into feelings everyone listening, you have the power to change that right now. Like if you're, if you're unhappy in your surroundings and the thing is your surroundings inevitably are going to have an effect on you. Of course, I'm very energetic. So someone coming in with a bad energy in my place, I can feel it, you know, it affects me. But if you're unhappy in your current surroundings, you're not living in the place you want to live. You're maybe unhappy in a relationship, whatever, in your job, you have the power to change that right away, right now in your mind. Like you can start to imagine what you would want. You can start to imagine how you'd like to be feeling if you're very stressed out in a job. I know for me personally, if I start to feel overwhelmed and stressed, then I tap into feelings of calm. Like I I went out for a walk. I wasn't stressed this morning, but I went out for a walk before this. I go out for walks every day to be in nature to bring in the feelings of calm and balance and harmony that I want. And that's really how sim- how simple it can be if you allow it to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, the same goes for business, <clears throat> right? Like if you are like, you know, working in your business, cause that's what we do. We work in our business, we work on our business or whatever. And if those things are not bringing you joy or making you happy, maybe it's time to have a look at that. And maybe you need to make a few tweaks. Maybe you need to change the whole thing, like whatever, right? Like, like 
you have the choice. So would you rather continue to do the things that are maybe not sparking joy or whatever in your business and continue to do those things? And, and we've all heard it and we probably know that this is the truth, but when we're trying to sell something that we're not truly passionate about, it just doesn't work. So, Mm -hmm. or go more in the direction of something that makes you happy, like tap into that, like sit down and ask yourself the hard questions. Like, Am I happy doing this? Like years ago, I was doing network marketing and, and I was like, I had to sit down and ask myself, like, I thought I was going to do that for life for the rest of my life. And I was like, is, am I supposed to be doing network marketing right now? And my heart said, no. And I was like, okay, I listened. And same happened with photography because I'm a photographer. I call myself retired now, but I was a photographer and the same thing happened. Right. I was like dreadful every time I had a photo shoot coming up or whatever. I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel like it. And I was like, and it had nothing to do with the people because the people are always awesome. Mm -hmm. But it was more about the act. Right. Like not, oh, I got to do another photo shoot. That's how I felt. And so I finally sat down and I'm like, no, I'm not doing any more photo shoots. I'm not doing it. I don't want to. I don't feel like it. So I'm not doing it. Right. And what happened because I felt this way, I wasn't even booking photo shoots. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, But I was mm -hmm. like, this is what I want to do. I love working online. I love helping women entrepreneurs build and grow their businesses so that they can, you know what I mean? Like, that's Mm -hmm. what I love doing. So, so of course, that's what I should do because that makes me happy and connecting with other entrepreneurs. That's another thing that makes me happy. So of course it makes sense that I have a podcast with guests and I host summits and right, because that's how I shine. Right. So truly look, tapping into that and, and sometimes having the courage to move into the direction of something, a change in business, that's maybe going to make you happier. Oh my gosh, exactly. And I'm so happy to hear <laughs> that you you actually checked in with yourself and how you felt. And I think this is important because, I mean, I was a project manager, then I got certified as a personal trainer, then I started a virtual fitness business, and that's how I became an entrepreneur. And then, you know, when that stopped serving me, same thing, I started to feel like it just didn't make sense anymore. Like I, 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 I loved the clients. I loved them as individuals, but I didn't love what I was doing and, you know, checking in. And I think one really great way to start to tap in and see, to start to find that happiness is think about what you value. And you said exactly earlier, like you got to think about it right now in the here and now, what do you value right now? Because at the beginning of starting my business, same with you in photography, you valued certain things. And, you know, we're at different ages in our life and we value things at certain times. I know in my twenties, I valued hustle and grind because that's what I thought I was ready. I wanted to hustle and grind. I love that. I was like, this is giving me energy. (laughs) Not anymore. Um, you know, and so now it's like when I took time to reevaluate, especially in those moments on the beach and reevaluate my values, what are my core values? What do I really value? Because the more we align our life decisions to what we actually value, inevitably, we're going to be happier, like inevitably. And I think we can also reflect, I've done some of this as well in the last, you know, couple of years, reflecting on times when I wasn't happy and really how that ended up, you know, seeing that I was going against my core values. Like I actually was going against my core values. Mm Mm-hmm. It's so true, right? Okay, next question. All right. So, and I think we talked a bit about this to when I'm so many women feel overwhelmed and stuck in unfulfilling jobs or businesses, right? But fear making changes to their habits, right? So we talked about like my personal experience with like being unfulfilled with like the network marketing or the photography and whatever. Um, had I not taken, had I not, t- you know. Take, had the courage to to take action and change my habits, I would still be stuck there, right? So how do you, like, what's your advice or how do you guide them through this fear of uncertainty? Because it's a huge one, right? Like the not knowing of, oh my God, like I have income here, but I want to move to this. 
how, how do you get your mind from there, from A to Z? So I think sometimes, especially I think in the entrepreneurship world too, is let's just say, let's just say you have a nine to five right now and you've got a side hustle, right? You, or you want to start your business or you've started your business. And, you know, we hear all these stories all the time about, I went all into my business. I quit my nine to five. Oh, I just did it. I, I went for the plunge. And I think the thing is, is it doesn't have, to, I mean, we're on our own journey. So it doesn't have to be that way. And that can be terrifying because we all have obligations. We have bills to pay. And so going all in to your business may not be what feels best for you. And I think it's about breaking it down into really small things. So again, tapping into, okay, so what brings you the most joy? Where, what type of, I think as well, what's really important when it comes to having a business is what is your dream? Like, what is your dream life? What is your dream business look like? It's never too early to think this because you'll start going down paths that you don't want to go if it doesn't align to what you really want. So, you know, start thinking about what you really want. Start thinking about what would make you happiest and breaking that down really small. And I know how I really started to pursue my passions after travel was, I'll give you an example. So when I moved back to Toronto, I said, things have to be different. I cannot do things the same way that I've been doing them. So instead of taking full-time project management work, I started contract project management work to give me space to take, to start doing other things. And that gave me space, freedom, and flexibility to be able to then, I got certified as a personal trainer. So then I had time. I started adding that to my, that was sure adding to my day, but it brought me so much joy. Like I, I really saw, I'm like, okay, I'm destined to be a coach, like without a doubt. And I've been a leader, like as a project manager my whole life. So it's like, I saw that I was, it was like, this is it. And it brought me so much joy and it created that. So look like this small step I took, right. It was a stepping stone to where I am today. So really in creating a happier life, it's just one small step. You may also need to evaluate what's no longer serving you. You can't just, we can't just start adding all these things to make us happier if we don't have the mental capacity and we don't have the space for it. So I think a key thing as well is doing a little audit, like an evaluation of your life. What is no longer serving me? And why is it not serving me anymore? Really get curious. I think curiosity is an amazing thing. I'm a very curious person. I'm always like wondering why I think things or I react a certain way. And I'm like, ooh, okay, why did I do that? So, you know, I think it's it getting curious about what's happening in your life, why you're feeling the way you are. And then, okay, how can you maybe stop doing some things or reducing some things to create the space for the things that you love doing? I know it's so important, right? Like, like I think that uh, like we skip the steps or sometimes we just, we are afraid to even think the thoughts or ask the hard questions. And then we stay like, you know, when I did network marketing and I found myself being stuck, I stayed there for way longer than I could have if I asked myself the hard questions sooner. And I'm talking years, I'm not talking months. I'm talking years, right? Whereas, you know, but I mean, it's part of the journey, right? Like sometimes you mm -hmm. look back and you're like, oh my God, mm -hmm. like, like I wish I asked myself the questions or whatever. It was part of what I was meant to go through to become the person I am today. Um, so it's okay, right? Like the way it happened, it was happened. But now we can sit here today and say, like, don't be afraid to ask yourself the hard questions, right? And move towards a happier life. And it doesn't have to be scary. It shouldn't be. I mean, stepping out of your comfort zone can feel scary, but it's all relative, right? It's all subjective. And so really, it doesn't have to feel that way. It can be exciting. And I can tell you a real life example I'm going through right now. So um, over the last four years, I started out fully all into like all into my business, fully doing it full time. Then 
over the last four years, every now and then a project management contract literally comes right to my plate and someone reaches out to me. We're looking for a project manager. I make sure it's like on my terms and I'm like, okay, if I have the capacity, I take it on. So I've been doing a project management contract for the last, like since uh, July of last year. And I realized though, about in February, it is not serving me anymore. Like I, you know, and it served a really good purpose because I had heavily invested in my business. I had heavily invested in personal development. I was going, getting into a very low money mindset. And I mean, naturally when you're looking at debt all the time, it's no matter, you know, as a mindset expert myself, I'm applying the tools, but it's still like, it's you're living it every day. It's a real stress. And so it put me, there was a purpose for the job. It came at the perfect time. It served me. And I've realized like it is affecting my days. It's affecting my overall harmony. And harmony is a key word. I'm like, I want a harmonious life. It's unpredictable, which life is unpredictable, but this is like really unpredictable. So what I deal with on a daily basis. So I've realized in the last few months, I had to really think, okay, I I had signed three more months and I just have a couple, like two more months left. And I'm like this, I, I'm like, no more, like no more. And also too, you know, sometimes we take these things cause it's easy. And I preach that do things that feel easy. I can identify now if I'm using it as a crutch. Right. And I know that there's so many amazing things in the works for me. I've been building and so much has happened in the last year. I'm like, I have to release this because that is going to free so much space for all the things that I just love to do. Like I cannot wait. And what I'm trying to do now is like, I know I'm on this timeline to June 28th. I can't wait, but I'm also like, okay, I'm not waiting for that moment to be happy. I'm creating the happiness as best as I can doing things like this, right? Like this makes me so happy having people in my podcast too. It's like, you know, I'm fulfilling that happiness the best that I can in the capacity I have right now. Mm-hmm. And that's key. And it's like, you know, I, I just knew though, I'm like, but I'm very in tune with my body and how I feel. I'm like, I can't, this is no longer serving me. I have to release it. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. So, so if you're going to speak to that, that person who is like in that money thing, right? Like that, that whole, like trying to have the good mindset, but the money thing is making you like, right? Like, or not have the good thoughts or whatever. Like, what do you say to that person? Cause you, you've been there like, right. Oh my like gosh. You, right. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, you know, not giving up, not quitting, not like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I definitely think when it, oh man, money mindset. I battled that. For well, years. so many of us go through mm-hmm. it, especially when yeah. we start our own business, continue to grow our business. It happens at, at so many different phases, right? And you don't even necessarily realize how much it's blocking you. And I really, as I started to educate myself more and more on, you know, the laws of attraction and, and all of that, fortunately, you know, it's important to have certain support <laughs> as well. You know, having tools that you can use when you're feeling that way. Some of the simplest things, though, and what I would do is you mentioned it for even just practicing gratitude for what you have. And, you know, when we really understand things and how the mind works and how the universe works or higher power, God, whatever it is you believe in, if the realities are, I was looking at debt, the realities were my credit, like, my credit cards were getting maxed. The realities were, I was like, I am not this human. Like, I'm like, I've never been like this. I'm a very responsible person. I've always been, I never had debt. My reality was showing me otherwise. We, as I started to understand that, I'm like, wow, okay. I know that somehow I'm I'm creating this. And all I would do was focus on debt. And I would be thinking and stressing about the money I didn't have. Now, there's a lot of various um, people, podcasts, things I listen to, you know, like I did Procter Gamble, like Bob Proctor, you know, I worked under Hina Khanna, peak performance coach. I got certain support that and and immersed myself in energy and community that helped me see that I could feel abundant in that in that type of situation. 
And it starts from the simplest things like looking around my place. Like you said, you have a safe roof over my head. I could eat, you know, I was able like somehow, whether I'm moving money around or whatever, I had access to money. And what I actually realized, I, I worked, I did this 15 minute call one day, I was feeling really low with one of the coaches. And she said to me, let's just actually go down worst case scenario. Cause I don't like to think worst case. I mean, your mind's already going to go there, but I was trying to be like, I shouldn't think worst case. Like I need to be thinking higher energy. I got to be thinking abundant, but I'm like, I'm fucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. So like, I would think that I would cry at the end of every month. Like I literally would cry. And I'm generally anyone that knows me would probably never see me cry. So they're like my best of friends, you know, seeing this and she's like, Oh my gosh, like, it's going to be okay, but it's hard to say that and and listen to that when you're living it. Mm -hmm. So I started to really practice daily gratitude for what I had. I started to really go down. So we went down, sorry, that worst case scenario. And what I realized is the worst case wasn't I was going to be homeless. The worst case was that I was going to have to ask my parents for money. And I'm 39. So, you know, a couple of years ago, that's like not something that I would want to do is for me, I'm independence is one of my top core values. So that was like a breach of that. And so, but we actually went down that and it allowed me to actually take a breath for a moment. Cause I'm like, okay, that's actually not so bad. Like it deep down, it's very bad for me internally, but it's not so bad. And, you know, Another thing, and this is where as well, when I decided to pick up some contract work is I learned, you know, what if it could be easy? Like what, we're making it so hard. I'm forcing things like I'm forcing offers. I'm forcing this. I'm forcing that. I'm not getting my energy behind it. So what would be easy? What would be an easy way for me to start bringing in money? And, you know, I had to allow myself to just think on that. I had to put it out into the universe, you know, what could I be doing? It's not sitting at my desk doing typing away mm -hmm. and doing all these things because that would stress me out. So I had to actually step away. I had to step away from my desk and put myself in the experiences so that I could feel the things I want to feel, whether it's hanging out with friends, you know what I mean? Going out in nature, like starting to get into those feelings. And things started to feel better. Again, it all starts in the mind. So if you just constantly focus on debt, you're going to attract debt. So it's like, okay, how can you show gratitude for what you have? And how can you just get yourself into a better feeling? Because the whole part with mindset, the whole thing about mindset is it doesn't change the situation you're in. It changes the way you react or perceive your situation. I've got friends that only talk about being broke. And I'm like, you're going to be broke your whole life, you know, and or you can think that you're abundant and that money is always coming to you. And it takes a while to get to this. But I truly believe like I know the more I rest, the more I make. I know that money is constantly flowing to and through me and it it doesn't cease to amaze me like all the time. You know, it's like get an email. Oh, getting money here or a tax return or whatever. It comes in so many different ways. And so again, I, I felt it. I've been there. If you're listening and you felt it, like, you know, DM me and we could chat about it. And I'm sure you have as well. It's just like, it happens, but we have to just tap back into that gratitude. We have to tap back into feeling better and also finding a way that works for you to feel better. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's awesome. So, okay. So in closing, <laughs> just to keep on time so that you can make your next call. Um, so reclaiming happiness can be a journey that requires ongoing effort. So what advice do you have for the listeners to sustain progress and continue prioritizing their happiness and their daily lives? Because I think that it's baby steps, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. compound effect, right? Mm-hmm. I think the best thing to do, the easiest thing that they can do right now, everyone, you listening, is tap into how you feel. So, you know, being happy is a good feeling. So, you know, really tap into 
how you're feeling and then allow yourself to feel good. Allow yourself to do something that feels good. And it's like, get playful with it. You know, I feel like when we think about being kids growing up in Orleans, right? What, what do we do? What was fun? Like what made us feel good? And that's what you like, that's what you can chase every single day is like, go after that feeling, do one tiny thing. And, you know, I have playlists on my phone that are very positive. Like I'm really conscious of what I consume. And so, you know, every day I start my day, I just, my alarm goes off and I hit play on like on a playlist and, you know, it might have affirmations. It might have whatever. It's like, We can do these little tiny things that put us into a better energy. But again, happiness is a feeling and you have to know it only comes, you're the only one that can feel it. So look within, identify, think about things that make you feel good and freaking do it. Like Mm -hmm. do it. You don't need anyone else. And certainly it's like, if you want to get out in nature and you're waiting for your partner to go for a walk with you, go for the walk. Like, Mm -hmm you know, do it yourself because it's like you said, it's a choice. Happiness is a choice. You can wake up every day and choose to be happy. You wake up every day and continue to live unhappy. And it's really like, it's really a choice away. And if you're feeling really constricted or like, it's not that easy for you, close your eyes, like see it in your mind. It's crazy. It's crazy. When you close your eyes and start to imagine, like I imagine literally living on a beach, a beach villa, like I imagine it, I can picture it perfectly, like how I want it to be. And it's like, when I think about that, literally it's like the ocean breeze is coming in. I'm waking up to the sunrise. Like, it's just like my voice changes. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I, it makes me so happy. So if you feel that it's going to be hard for you to actually like do physically do something today, then just close your eyes and imagine it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like simple things, like it doesn't take much, like, like going to just the simple act of going to a coffee shop and getting a coffee like that, it puts me a whole nother vibe. And it's simple. It's, it's so simple, right? But I'm like, when I feel like a different person when I do that, when I go to like a, not fancy, because a coffee shop's a coffee shop, but some just have that vibe right and you're like you feel more like special when you go get a coffee it's stupid but it's so no it's not we are soul sisters okay I literally my mind was thinking that exact example and I know I've been going to a coffee shop for a long time down the street for me and I know everyone I just stopped in today I didn't buy a coffee to say hi because I love them I literally got a hug from two of the people that work there because it's like And I literally just go, I know the second I walk in that door, I'm going to walk out elevated. Like I know, and that's exactly it. It can be the smallest of things that you can do. And also it's like, show appreciation for all these things that you have. Be grateful. Take a moment. Take, I do this when I go for a walk, take your earbuds, earbuds out or whatever. Listen to like birds chirping. I heard recently now that the, you know, it's getting brighter earlier Birds are chirping mm-hmm. in the morning. I'm like, oh my God, the birds are chirping. Spring is coming. I love, I love the birds. I love the birds chirping. <laughs> um, oh, that's so awesome. I love it. I'm sure we could keep going on and on and oh on. Oh my God, but, forever. <laughs> but hey, you've got a really awesome freebie for everybody listening called I The do. Mastering Judgment and Rewriting Your Through Your Truth. Tell us what that is. And I'm going to have the link to that in the show notes. So you can all grab it if you're listening. Amazing. So this is actually a tool that I use with all of my clients. And I'm just so grateful to share it with you. So this is a 30 minute masterclass. It is quick. It is short. It is all about talking about self-doubt, talking about fear. So that fear of taking that next step, we hold a lot of judgments. We have a lot of limiting beliefs within us. This is going to help you forgive yourself. Like there's a lot of power in that. I get goosebumps saying it, forgiving yourself for a judgment you're holding about yourself. And then I'm going to guide you through an activity to create a new truth. This is an empowering, more positive perspective. You can take a step back, look at your judgment and say, no, 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 I don't need to believe that anymore. I want to change that. And 
This is a critical step to overcoming any doubts and fears that we have that are really holding us back. So in 30 minutes, you'll make your first mind shift. And I share specifically in that a very personal example and how I felt unsuccessful in my business and how I use this tool to reframe that so that I could raise my vibration really every single day to feel more successful. I love it. So I'm going to have that in the show notes for everybody to grab. So make sure you grab that. And Jane, it was so amazing talking to you. And if someone is like listening and they truly vibe with you the way I do, where can we find you and how, how can we work with you? I am all over Instagram. So I just give, give, give. I, every single day I'm posting, I'm sharing mind shifts I've made. I'm sharing lots of things for you to learn and just to hopefully help you hop, skip and jump over a lot of these challenges I faced in the last few years. So I'm all over Instagram. I show up there every day. So be sure, check it out. Follow me, say hello, because I love to interact with my audience. Um, and as for what I'm doing right now, so I offer a variety of things. I've got master classes. I offer monthly. I've got a course coming up in the beginning of May. And then I also now have brand new tiered intensive. So you could connect with me on a two, for two weeks, for a month, for three months. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to get your toes wet and to see what it's really like to work with a mindset coach like myself and see what you can accomplish. So there's lots of options coming out. I'm just launching those like literally right now. So it's really exciting. And what are we today as we're recording this? This episode will air next week, the 23rd. So we're like just a week, a week or two away from from all of your good things coming out. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much um, for being here, for being on the show today. It was so nice meeting you and talking to you. And I'm sure we'll talk again soon. (laughs) Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And if you're listening to this episode, I will talk to you at the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Build Your Beautiful Business podcast. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Julie's included a link in the shows to make it nice and easy for you. And if you want to create a beautiful, profitable business of your own, make sure to go unlock your access to Julie's six must-have resources for female entrepreneurs. These resources will help you build and grow your business with simplicity and ease. You can find them at juliecbutler.com forward slash freebie vault. We'll see you in the next episode.